breaking news to share with you guys on the situation in Ukraine and the possibility of World War III. So there's reports coming out now that Fort Bragg troops could be deploying to Europe within the next 72 hours. And if you guys don't know uh, where Fort Bragg is, it's in North Carolina. And this is coming from WRAL News. And sources are telling one of the reporters for this local news agency that some of the special forces and airborne troops in Fort Bragg uh, have been given the order to deploy within the next 72 hours to the European theater. Uh, and if that's true, that's a huge red flag that we're on the verge of something because they usually don't deploy special forces unless it's something serious. Okay, specifically, they mentioned the 82nd Airborne and the 18th Airborne Corps that's what the sources told one of the reporters of WRAL News Fayetteville. The reporter's name, Gilbert Baez, he had several sources tell him that the 18th Airborne and the 82nd Airborne uh, were getting ready to deploy into the European theater within the next 72 hours, guys. That is absolutely huge. If this is true, that's a big red flag that we are... Uh, going to be going to war or something is going to happen in Ukraine. Um, in my opinion, I initially thought that maybe Russia would just take the eastern parts of Ukraine. But the more I think about it, it doesn't really make sense for them to just take the eastern part or the Russian speaking parts because it's not going to really give Putin anything significant. It's going to, yeah, protect some of the Russian speakers and it's going to give him some bragging rights back home in Russia that he saved the Russians. But if he really wants a buffer zone, he's got to take control of Kiev. He's got to get Ukraine back under his control. He's got to install a puppet, okay, just like he had before the Maidan revolution when he had uh, Yanukovych. And just like he has now, he has puppets in Belarus and Kazakhstan. He's got Lukashenko in Belarus, and he's got the leader in Kazakhstan. And they they basically, uh, you know, they're basically under his control. When he says jump, they, they ask how high. And that's what he wants in Ukraine. Um, he wants to install a puppet that he can manipulate and can basically do whatever he wants. And, uh, you know, just going after eastern Ukraine wouldn't really make sense. So I think Russia is planning to attack the capital. I think he's going to go for the capital. He's going to go big and try to take the entire capital and force the current government to surrender and give up control of the country to him. I think that's what he's going to do. And he's going to use the troops that he put on the eastern border of Ukraine as a distraction, as a diversion, and in military tactics, it's known as a, a turning maneuver. Okay, what he's going to do is he's going to attack from the east, and he's going to launch an offensive from the eastern part of the country and make it look like he's trying to take over the eastern part. And what that's going to do is it's going to force Ukraine's military to focus on the eastern part and then he's going to move in for the capital while they're over there deployed on the eastern part of Ukraine. And he's going to try to take the capital, Kiev. And Kiev is only about 50 miles from Belarus, okay? And he's been moving troops into southeastern Belarus uh, within 100 miles of Kiev, okay? They can cross that distance very quick and have Kiev surrounded in a matter of hours. Versus if they try to come in through the east, they're going to have to cover three or 400 miles of territory, okay? So that's what I think is going to happen. And the area just north of Kiev, where I think Russia would launch their offensive from, there's a lot of swamps there, okay? Uh, that's where you have the Pripyat marshes, where Chernobyl is, and that's where you have Polesia or Polesia. Uh, which is a huge swampland that straddles the border of Ukraine and Belarus. It's like 300 miles long, and it goes all the way into Poland. 
and it's a huge wetland area. There's really nothing comparable to it here in the U.S. The, the closest thing that I can think of is the parts of northern Minnesota, the Boundary Waters area. That's basically what Polesia is like. It's about three or 400 miles long and maybe about uh, one or 200 miles uh, wide. Okay, so it's like the Boundary Waters in Minnesota, but much, much bigger. Um, and so that's why they need that ground to freeze solid, because if they're going to go through the north and they're going to come through uh, northern Ukraine near the Belarus border, that area is covered in swampland and bogs. So they need it to be pretty well frozen if they're going to move equipment through. But that's just my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But nonetheless, we have the Fort Bragg troops uh, giving given a. Uh, a notice to get ready to ship out to Europe within 72 hours and supposedly the 82nd Airborne and the 18th Airborne Corps have been notified uh, and if you guys don't know anything about the 82nd Airborne the 82nd Airborne is one of the premier airborne units in the US Army it's a quick reaction airborne force and it has a long history of of being deployed in, in multiple wars. Um, they were first used in World War II in uh, the D-Day invasions. If you guys know anything about the D-Day invasions, we had the main landing, the beach landings on uh, Normandy, but also behind the beach landings, you had the paratroopers that landed before the beach landings and they secured some of the bridges there and some of the towns behind the beach. and uh you know they were prepping everything for the main invasion force to come through normandy so the 82nd airborne was there they, they've been in multiple conflicts in vietnam uh they've been in grenada um in panama in operation just cause in panama they were uh, active in in all the middle eastern wars and the last time they were activated recently was the uh debacle in afghanistan when uh, they had to evacuate Americans from Afghanistan. They were deployed there. So they don't deploy the 82nd Airborne or for that matter, any troops from Fort Bragg unless it's something very serious. Okay, Fort Bragg is uh, home of the Special Forces, the Green Berets. Um, it's, it's one of our uh, premier uh, special operations uh, bases where all the, the Special Forces are. So this is a, a red flag, in my opinion, that the U.S. government is, is planning something big and Russia is planning something big. Uh, are they going to be paratrooping into or parachuting into Kiev? Possibly. Um, they're not going to de deploy the 82nd Airborne for no reason. OK, they're going to be deployed somewhere in Eastern Europe and they're going to be on standby just in case they have to be dropped into Kiev, maybe, or some other areas, who knows, you know. Uh, but this is a red flag, wanted to share this with you.